What's going on guys? Welcome to the first episode of my NHL 24 Toronto Maple Leafs franchise mode series. I've seen a bunch of you commenting asking for them. I'm sure obviously a lot of Toronto fans watch the videos. My GM name there is 67 of course the last time the Leafs won the cup. 56 years ago. Hopefully can win at least one cup here in one of our eight seasons. If you guys didn't watch last series, I decided to move on to eight seasons just because I feel like kind of people don't care as much in the last couple. Also too, makes it a bit more challenging on me. So Toronto Maple Leafs here, top players, no surprises. Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, William Nylander. I should mention too guys, with the player, I'm using Vassy's custom roster five for this video. He's got hundreds of custom players. I have made some small changes, but for the most part, it's his. You look at the team ratings here, we're 88 overall, which I think has us tied for the third highest rated team in the Atlantic. Boston's number one at 90. Ottawa's actually number two at 89. Kind of crazy because they're not doing too good in real life. And then we're tied there with Detroit and Florida. Actually, sorry, we're tied for fourth highest rate in the Atlantic because Tampa Bay and Boston are tied for one. So Ottawa's technically three. Jeez. All right. So like I was saying, right now in real life, Leafs are doing pretty good, not amazing. I think you know, definitely I could come in, make this team a little bit better. In terms of the career here, guys, you can have everything turned off except for salary cap and computer trades. And now in terms of the rules here, guys, as always, injuries turned off. They're just super annoying. I'm going to leave period length at three minutes, actually, because when I do jump in, it's kind of easier that way. Of course, authentic cap penalties will be on. Again, franchise mode length will actually be eight years. Difficulty, superstar, draft pick ownership, authentic. Trade difficulty, I still want it to be on hard just to make it, you know, a bit tougher on us already, I think. You can get some pretty easy trades to go through, even though it's on hard. So if it was on medium, I think it'd be not challenging enough. Now, similar to scoring, I'm going to leave on medium for this one. You guys said the high high was a bit too much. Draft class quality, prospect quality, I'll have low for the first four years, and then I'll bump it up to medium for the next four years. And finally here, guys, I like to have attribute effects. That's a 9 out of 10, just to give more realistic sims. Usually if you do this, the good teams will sim better, and the bad teams will sim worse. And now next year, guys, before we make any change to the team, I'll first show what the team looks like to start with. I'm sure... All the Leafs fans know, but right now I've actually gone top heavy here. Nylander, Matthews, and Marner all playing together on that first line. I think they could honestly be the best line in hockey. Second line still decent. Bertuzzi, Tavares, Domi. You got Robertson, Camp, and Yarncroc on the third with the Reeves, Gregor, and Nyes on the fourth. Defensively here, McCabe, Riley, top pair. Lilligren, Brody on the second, and Giordano, Kleinberg on the bottom. Goaltending wise, you got Samsonov starting. Joseph will back him up. Samsonov probably should be lower rated at this point has been having like, you know, the best season so far, but uh, last year is pretty good. So the first move is the newest GM, the Maple Leafs, is to sign a three-time Stanley Cup champion, former Maple Leaf, Phil Kessel, 80 overall there, 35 years old. He's got a great shot on him though. Of course, he's got the bounce back X factor. This guy can't get injured. So I'm going to try and put him on the third line right wing, I think. Probably take over for Nick Robertson, send him down to the minors, or hopefully he'll dominate. I'm thinking if Kessel goes off, we'll ask for more money. Might as well just keep him for the rest of this thing until he retires. Which, I mean, until he's 38, that'd probably get it done. So, offer three years of 1.5. If he ends up not playing well, most of that salary can be buried. And now, in terms of our assets here, guys, you can see we got about 3.5 million in cap space. Austin Matthews has max trade value, as you'd expect. Marner there is pretty close. Nylander should probably have more, but maybe it's because he's got one year left. I've also got to give him an extension. I'm thinking we'll do that start of the season before he potentially pops off. Tavares, Riley, Brody, the rest of the guys there. Kind of all makes sense. You got Fraser Minton, who's actually back in juniors. Ty Voigt's decent in the AHL. Draft pick wise, we still have our first rounder, no second. Uh, we also don't have a first rounder 2025. Okay, so that's not ideal, but I mean, we should be contending, in which case the first round picks aren't gonna matter too much. Now for our first trade here, guys, we're trying to get Isaac Lunch from the Anaheim Ducks. We actually could use some more center depth. He'd probably be third or fourth line center for us, 23, 78, medium top nine. I'm obviously hoping he'll turn into a better player, former first round pick in 2018. We're offering up a couple players here that really aren't much. Rafai, Rafay, hopefully I said that right, 25, only a 66. Ellis there, 23, only a 69, plus a seventh. This is basically getting him for free. And they say yes, they must have honestly viewed lunchtime as a bit of a cap dump. Now, not done yet in terms of trying to fix the center position. I feel like our 3C, 4C simply aren't good enough. I see Ottawa's got Giroux on the block, which would be kind of crazy. If we don't have the cap space for it. Shane Pinto, though. I mean, he's an RFA. We could make him an offer, but we could also trade for him. I'm just kind of curious. Third and a fourth is pretty close to value. He'd probably cost about a second round pick. All right, guys. So rather than giving up picks for Pinto, I'm going to try offering him a one-year, $1.3 million deal. It doesn't require any picks. I feel like Ottawa's pretty close to the cap, but they could probably just send, like, one guy down to the minors and still get him. All right, guys, so Shane Pinto accepted the offer as of now, but obviously Ottawa has a chance to match. And are you kidding me? I offered Phil Kessel like double what he's asking. He rejects it to go with the Blackhawks. I got to see how much do they sign him for. The Blackhawks signed Kessel to a one-year deal at 900K. 
I offered him three years at 1.5 and he said no to mine. So I guess he's banking on doing better. Honestly, I'm gonna trade for Phil Kessel. I feel like it's too cool to have him back on the team. And look at this, guys. The Senators matched our offer to Shane Pinto. So swing and a miss for both him and Kessel. But like I was saying, I'm gonna try and make a trade here for Kessel. We couldn't actually do it before because we had the money going out for Pinto. Now we got that cleared up. Kind of sucks. We have to give up a pick. And, you know, obviously they just signed. Well, we'll say we made them an offer they can't refuse. I, I still don't understand Kessel's logic rejecting our three-year 1.5. Luckily, we get him there for a fourth. I'm happy with that. And so after those moves, guys, we just set the lines for this season. Obviously, not a huge change, but we do have Phil Kessel now, third line right wing. We've also got Isaac Lundstrom there, fourth line center. So hopefully, just added a bit of depth. I'm really hoping, too, that first line actually works out for us going top heavy. I don't think any change to the defense. I should point out, even though Klingberg is 79, very good offensively. You can see there, like, solid shot, good passing. Just defensively, <laughs> not very good. So hopefully, playing with Giordano is a solid stay-at-home defenseman will help him out. In terms of the power play, I mean, power play one there, absolutely deadly. Should be one of the best in the NHL. Even the second unit isn't that bad. Uh, four man there, first one's a plus five, second to minus three. Honestly, most of our second, you know, power play units are negative chemistry. I'm not sure if it's lack of X factors or whatever, but, you know, hopefully they're not on the ice as much, won't matter. PK wise, could have some better defensive forwards, but for the most part, it's pretty good. I think only the third three man actually gets negative chemistry, which is honestly pretty good. Now, look at the AHL team. You got Robertson on that first line again. Hopefully, he plays well. He's there with Gambrel and Gregor. Second line, I mean, you got some players. Ty Voigt, third line. Hopefully, he'll be a player for us in the future. Defensively, you got Timmins, who could end up making an NHL team. Nimla as well could also earn a spot in the future. Goaltending, Martin Jones, pretty good AHL starter, I'd say. So, overall, like the Leafs team, pretty much as is, but obviously, a little bit better in terms of the coaching staff as well guys we've got an a minus head coach i'd prefer to have an a to start but it's not too bad i've actually already gone through and replaced some of the assistants so new associate coach here a plus power play the assistant's got an a plus pk goalie coach there a plus teaching i think i kept the hl head coach because he was a b minus overall which ain't that bad associate coach that i also kept because he already had a plus power play new assistant coach though a plus pk and then new hl goalie coach a plus teaching those are the stats that matter the most for them in terms of scouting i actually got really lucky um, in terms of like the overall the scouts I had to start. So we got a couple in the Russia there with A plus, couple in Liga, couple SHL. They're all A plus, of course. Actually, Adele, two USA East. One of them's an A overall. So having that off the start is really nice. You can see I also got like a handful of Bs. Also got an A scout there in the central with a B. Uh, of course, if they're an A overall, they don't need to be an A plus. Same goes for like this guy, only a B minus there in the east. Uh, you can see USA West, a couple more Bs. The Q there, they're both A pluses. Um, OHL, we got a B with an A, so that's fine. WHL, we actually have this guy, A overall and an A in the region. So I think got really lucky in terms of the scouts that they started us with. And now the last thing we have to do, guys, before I show the ratings and start the sim is actually give Nylander a contract extension. As I mentioned, I think he's going to do the well this year, especially play on that top line, Matthews and Marner. So right now he's asking for 8.7. I've done this before, actually, as like an experiment. He ends up getting like 11.5 if he plays well. So 8.7 for seven years is actually an absolute steal potentially get him for even cheaper than that. Since it's the beginning of the year, he hasn't really done anything yet. I'll try offering him eight there for seven years. If he says yes, I think that's a steal. TJ Brody, we could also offer on six million bucks for three years. That's about what we'd have to pay him anyways. Liljegren here, he wants four million bucks. Again, that's probably around what he would get. So it doesn't make a ton of sense to pay him early unless we think he's going to absolutely pop off. So We'll wait to see Nylander. I think $8 million would be a steal. As like I said, when I did the experiment, I think he got like 11, maybe even 11.5. So last preseason game here, guys, taking a look at the ratings. We've got 94 offense, 87 defense, 82 goaltending. So let's see whether or not this is the season where the Leafs win their first Stanley Cup in 56 years. And real quick too, guys, before we get started with the Sims, if you want to mind leaving a thumbs up on this video, it really helps me out. And look at that, guys. Nylander did accept the contract extension. Honestly, getting him for $8 million is huge. Literally gives us like an extra $3 million to sign a third line player or something like that. So... That's honestly so awesome that he accepted early. Just got up here, guys, in the Calgary Flames. A third to fifth, Pishik and Eakin for Fraser, Minton, and Steve. He's going to say no to that for sure. So far, pretty bad start to the year. We're currently 5, 11, and 6. Don't quite understand why we're losing so much. And you know what, guys? It might be because of our staff chemistry. Only a 56% right now after I fired a bunch of old coaches who, you know, just weren't really good in the places we needed them. So maybe... They'll start to pick it up here in the second half of the year. And actually, guys, look at our first line right now. It's a minus 10 for Nylander, minus 9 for Matthews, minus 10 for Marner. Okay, so let's switch this up. Nylander's extended. Could put uh, Domi on the first line instead. Maybe move Nylander to the right wing. Try that. You know what? Let's put Pertuzzi on the first line. Slightly less chemistry, but he is higher rated. 
Uh, clearly like stack in the first line. I thought it'd be awesome, but it doesn't appear to be working as we're 6, 13, and 7. Last place in the Atlantic. Actually, we're last place in the NHL right now on December 13th. Like, we actually lost nine straight games starting here with the November 11th game against the Canucks going all the way to December 7th against the Ottawa Senators. Like, I don't understand this game sometimes. The Leafs should be doing way better. And so at the end of December, guys, we're now 9, 18, and 7. Really didn't do much. 25 points. Like... What? <laughs> what? What is happening? I can't do anything but laugh. Matthews is a point per game. He's got 24 goals there with 10 assists. Okay, so hopefully a rough start. I'm not going to, you know, pull the panic button quite yet, but if we're still in the same spot at the deadline, we're going to have to trade away some pending guys because might as well get something back. Montreal Canadiens want us to drop back two rounds in order to take on this medium fringe starter goalie. That seems insane. All right, guys, we're at the trade deadline now. And honestly, I'm at a loss for words. The Maple Leafs, 24, 30, and 9. How are we doing this bad? I think we've done slightly better since the first few months, but we honestly had to go on like a hot streak to even have a chance at the playoffs. Currently 11 points back there. I think there's only like three teams doing worse than us in the entire league. Luckily, we do have our first round picks still for this year. AHL team, they're doing really good. 33, 17, and 3. Just makes no sense to me. Nick Robertson there averaging almost a point per game. Matthews here over a point per game by quite a bit. He's got 45 goals. So Matthews is doing his part. Maybe it's just like the defense. I was looking pretty much every single player on this team is a dash player. The goal is below 900, but not that much below it. Um, I don't know. I, <laughs> I thought we were contending for a Stanley Cup. I didn't think we were going to be one of the worst teams in the league, especially attribute effects, 9 to 10. Very, very strange. So we'll get to the deadline. I guess we're a conservative seller. Not at all where I expected to be, but sometimes a sim doesn't go your way. Like I mentioned too, maybe, you know, changing the coaching staff at the beginning of the year, trying to completely maximize it. Wasn't the move. Maybe I should have waited a year or so, but we still had good staff chemistry. Jeremy Swayman. Honestly, I don't usually go for him because I'm trying to rebuild, but with a team like the Leafs, they actually do need an elite goalie. And he'd kind of be the perfect age to kind of to grow with this team. He's a guy I would consider. Sean Couture would be awesome. But, I mean, we already have John Tavares. So, like, he's kind of a waste as a third-line center. Same goes for Giroux. Bringing Kadri back would be fun, but cannot afford him. Kane, Deneau, I mean, pretty expensive third-line center. We don't really have the money. Chris Tanev, expiring contract. Same with Hannafin. So, if I was to do anything here, it's probably making a trade for Swayman for the future. Have that elite goalie. Again, looking at Samsonov here, he's got an 897 save percentage. Not absolutely terrible, but definitely, you know, we'd like to see above 900. Joseph Wool there, even worse. So, Samsonov will be included in this trade. As I mentioned to you guys, we luckily still have our first round pick. I was, you know, contemplating trading at the beginning of the year. So thankful I did not. And I mean, honestly, guys, we might as well trade like Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi. The chance of us making the playoffs down 11 points at the deadline is so slim. I don't know how we had this start, but. Somehow we did. So I know Bruins fans really like Bertuzzi on their team. Would Samsonov and Bertuzzi get us Jeremy Swayman? That looks to be pretty equal value. We're actually saving a few million in cap space. What do the Bruins say here? Trades rejected. Okay, they said quite far off. Actually, you know what, guys? Instead, we could trade Giordano because he's 40 years old. So good chance to retire after this season anyways. Do him and, like, our fifth round pick, assuming we, you know, do better than Chicago. Maybe this is enough to push it through. And it is. We're calling up Robertson Timmons. Okay, so big trade there for Jeremy Swayman. I don't think we're done. Again, didn't expect to be here. Might as well make the most of it. Try and get some assets back. So Max Domi, I mean, we could bring him back. I know, like, you know, everyone loved Ty Domi. I might do that. I think Max Domi at least is a decent third-line player. John Klingberg, I was looking at his stats. Super strange, which is probably why he doesn't have a ton of value. Only 79 overall as well, making 4 million. 22 assists this year, 0 goals. So... Could go up in rating a bit. I mean, he's probably good still. Power play too. His plus minus, only minus 13. Pair that to Morgan Riley, minus 24. Brody's minus 7. McKay minus 21. So that top pair is not really working. Also to you guys can see Matthew's extension is added. 13.25 for the next four years. And I think Brody, even though he's expiring, we got to keep. He's our best defensive defenseman. Definitely cannot lose him on a team that's you know, seems to be allowing tons of goals with a terrible plus minus across the board. Now, David Camp here making 2.4 million for the next four years. He's a 79. He probably should be a little bit better, maybe like an 80, but not great. Let's see if we could just dump his contract. 
I'm thinking a team like Chicago who has a ton of cap space. They actually do like him. Maybe we take back Tyler Johnson. One year left at 5 million. Camp's got more value. We could actually walk away here with a pick. Maybe our own fourth rounder back. This would be incredible. Okay, they said no. Honestly, I would just dump the contract. It's not great at all. And the Blackhawks say yes. So I think that's a smart move for us. And look at this. Winnipeg Jets offering us Chaz Lucius and Ford for Max Domi and Klingberg. Both expiring. I said I wanted to bring Domi back. There's a chance like he'll still end up in free agency anyways. Chaz Lucius is a solid player. 2076, medium top six. Tough to say no to this one. Ford, Parker Ford, 2372, medium top nine, two way forward. Could eventually maybe be a bomb six guy for us. Honestly, this is a pretty good offer here by the Jets. As I'm looking at it, Carolina makes us a worse offer. There you go, back to the Jets offer. I think this makes a lot of sense. Again, there's a good chance we could still sign Domi. He's got 47 points, 63 games. For some reason, you know, this team just isn't getting it done. I don't really get it. So I think Klingberg, I don't know if I was going to bring him back for Chaz Lucius. That makes a lot of sense. I'm going to say yes. So we are really in dealing. And now before the Jets made us that offer, I was trying to make a trade with Philly to get the LA Kings fifth rounder this year, their fourth rounder next year. They're pretty bad. So hopefully they're still bad next season. Simon Benoit here. 7th D potential. He's in the AHL. He's got a bit of extra value because he's got the Triculans X Factor. Ryan Reeves. For us this year, he's got 2 goals, 0 assists, 72 penalty minutes there, 63 games, minus 17. I mean, it's nice having an enforcer. I don't really think, though, he's moving the needle for us. And we get a couple picks back, especially since we're pretty low on picks. I think this would make a lot of sense. Philly says yes. So that's probably it. I think we made more moves, honestly, than I expected to. But, you know, I think it'll work out better for us. I think getting Jeremy Swayman especially was huge. And you look at the draft pick situation now. For this year, basically we have everything but a second and a fourth. Next year, we've got everything but a first and a second. If we're good next year, it's not the end of the world. Hopefully, too, our first rounder can actually be uh, top five. Maybe, in, I mean, if we somehow landed Mac and Celebrini, that would just be ridiculous. But I'm not going to get my hopes up for that. And now next year, guys, I'm trying to get a really small trade with the Arizona Coyotes to get Travis Dermott. Basically, right now, we don't even have 12 defensemen total, so our AHL team might be kind of messed up. I think, too, we could potentially get him cheap on the bomb pair next year if we do need that kind of guy. Uh, Richard there isn't really great. 27, only 74. Lukoski, low top 9. Chadwick, low top 6 defenseman. Probably don't get signed. If we can get Dermot basically for free, it's a great trade for us. They say no, which, I mean, makes a ton of sense. Maybe, I mean, I think it's honestly so close. We could offer them, like, a 7th round pick five years from now. And now they say yes, so... Yeah, that should just help out in terms of roster management. That way, we actually have enough defensemen for both the NHL and the AHL team. Now, the trade deadline just went over, guys. I should show you two Swayman stats on the year. 16 wins, 35 games, 900 save percentage, 3.32 goals against. Playing on a pretty good Boston Bruins team. I honestly thought they'd be better than that, but still, I'm pretty, you know, optimistic about him for the future. Wow. Red Wings trade away Patrick Kane to New York Islanders. It's kind of funny. I mean, in real life, if we're not a playoff spot, we probably do trade him. Raquel there goes to the Blackhawks. Matt Dumba to the Sabres. Our trade for Dermott, Tarasenko to the Golden Knights, Red Wings got a first round pick there, along with Stillman for Jake Wallman, David Perron, I don't see us trading Wallman, Lowry there going to the Ducks, interesting the Jets would do that while also, you know, loading up with us, Sergei Bobrovsky goes to the Blackhawks, so basically just a straight cap dump for a third and a fourth going to Florida, very interesting trade, Blackhawks one of the few teams that could take on his whole contract, our trade for Chaz Lucius, we gave up quite a bit though, Domi Klingberg, Daniel Sprong goes back to the Kraken, our trade there, Camp for Johnson. Sean Monaghan to the Islanders for Varlamov. Interesting. I feel like the Canadians have good enough gold. Tiny Barbanov to the Avalanche with Hoffman. Sharks got a first round pick for that. Evander Kane going to the Canucks with Connor Brown. Leckermacki going back to the Edmonton Oilers. Geez. They also get the defensive uh, Patterson. Duclair goes back to the Blue Jackets. Ryan Graves to the Ducks. JT Comfort for the Predators. Trevor Van Riemsdyk to the Flyers. So the Van Riemsdyk brothers are actually on the same team now. Washington Capitals got Scott Lawton there. And a third round pick in exchange for him. So honestly, pretty active trade deadline. Um, nothing too massive, I guess. Wallman, Perron to the Devils. They're saying one of the bigger deals. All right, guys. So after the trade deadline, I'll give you an updated look at the team. I highly doubt we make the playoffs now, but you never know with this game. Which is why I trade away all those expiring deals. Rather be safe than sorry. Not, you know, bank on us having a miracle run. So Matthew Nye is actually jumping from the fourth line to the first line. Getting a chance there with both Matthews and Marner. Second line is now Nylander, Tavares, and Yarncroft. The third there is Lundstrom with Johnson and Kessel. The fourth line is honestly like our three worst AHL players just because I figured you know, why I hurt the AHL team. We're trying to call their cup run at least. 
Defensively, I'm going to try Brody and Riley, even though they get a minus two. Brody was like our second best defense in terms of plus minus. We'll try that. Lilligram was actually our best, so maybe put him with McCabe. Dermot Timmons on the bottom pair is also bad chemistry, but it is what it is. Goaltending and Swayman, of course, starting. I'm curious to see how this team does. We still have our stack power play one. The rest of the special teams are kind of just shot for right now. AHL-wise, like I mentioned, Robertson's still there. He's an 80. That first line's intact. We've added Chaz Lucius to the second line. I think the bomb six is the same for the most part. Defensively, has gotten a little bit worse without Connor Timmons, but, you know, hopefully we've got good chemistry there. Plus three on the top pair and the bottom pair. We still got Martin Jones and Ned, who's 79, which is pretty good for the AHL. They can go on a run here and at least have one team in the playoffs. And now check this out, guys. So typical. One game left in the regular season. We've actually gotten back to 500. 35, 35, and 11. Of course, that's considering OT losses as ties. Somehow, after the deadline, we started playing better. We won most of our games. This week here, we actually lost three games of regulation. But apart from that, I think those are pretty much the only games we didn't get a point. The rest were either wins or OT losses, uh, apart from actually yesterday's game against the Panthers. So somehow, even though I traded away a bunch of players, gave us a crappy fourth line, we've actually gotten up in the standings. Luckily, 81 points. We should still have decent odds at Celebrini. Definitely no chance to make the playoffs. Last game against the Lightning is a loss at least. Okay, so that would have been a win that really did nothing for us. And so at the end of the year, guys, our final record, 35, 36, and 11. Second last technically behind the centers there, even though we both have 81 points. AHL team, 41, 22, and 7. They played very well. They actually won their division. Take a look and see. I assume Robertson, yeah, he was the leading scorer. 61 points in 70 games. NHL-wise, Matthews there at 98 82. We'll see how everyone else did. Matthews had, you know, almost 100. We can't complain about that. Should definitely keep his 95 overall rating. One shy of 60 goals. Him having another 60 goal season would have been awesome. Marner at 94. Nylander there at 88. Matthews and Marner actually ended up being positive players after we took Nylander off their line. So very strange. Tavares ended up being a zero. He was uh, minus there in the first few months. Yarncroc, Riley minus 27. Kessel minus 25. Riley had one shy of 50 points, which is solid. Tyler Johnson, I mean, I'm kind of curious, I guess, what he did on our third line. Eight points, 19 games. Didn't expect much from him. Lodrigan, 25 points is decent. Matthew Nye is 24. I thought he might have picked it up a bit more playing first line there to end the year, but uh, probably just didn't have enough time left. Goaltending, Jeremy Swayman here. Take a look at his stats with us. So he had a positive record there, which again, I don't understand. Just under 900 save percentage, though. 339 and goals against. Uh, Wool, they're actually like identical save percentage to him. AHL, Wise Barn Jones, very good numbers. Six shutouts there, 919 save percentage, 2 3 goals against. After Robertson, Gamble's pushing 60. Abruzzi, Gerard Chensev, Bellows, all at close to 50. And now looking at the entire league here, guys. Conor McDavid had the most points, 112. Actually tied with Miko Ranton and geez. Debrinket 101 with the Red Wings. Dry Saddle 4. Matthews was 5th. Kopitar, McKinnon, Jack Hughes, Cole Coffey with 96. Looking at goals. Matthews is in first, 59. Caulfield put up 54. I think he only starts out at 84, already at 86. He absolutely popped off, so he's going to grow a ton. Also, too, uh, Matthews there going to be splitting the Richard Shard with McDavid. Defensive scoring goes to Victor Hedman. You don't actually see him doing it that much. Quinn Hughes, Kel McCarr, both right behind him. Same with Carlson, Fox, Yossi. Those five guys are usually the usual suspects. Goaltending here. Jake Andre had the most wins. Sabre percentage for a starter. Elias Sorokin, 9-2. Makes a lot of sense. Goals against for a starter. Also Sorokin, 255. I think he had some of the most wins at 41. So should be a lock for the Vesna. Rookie skaters here. Conor Bedard, does he get the Calder? He most likely does. 80 points, 32 games, plus 15. Up to a 91 already. Carlson there at 67, though. Korchinski, 61. Big year. Zach Benson, 52. Cooley, Fantilli. And now look at the entire league here, guys. This is actually where I'm really curious. So, so the Red Wings there actually won the division. They always sim so well. And it's kind of crazy. Wait a minute. I just realized... The Red Wings won the division and still trade away Patrick Kane. Why would they do that? That makes no sense to me, but okay. We got second last there in the division. Entire league, Dallas Stars in the President's Trophy, 108 points. You had seven teams there with 100 plus. Um, almost the perfect top 16 making it in. I want to see our name as late as possible. 27th, okay. So we've got the sixth best odds at Celebrini. If we won one less game there at the end, we would have had the fifth best odds. Probably easily could have been below the Canadians if we didn't just start playing actually good um, after the deadline. Maybe even the Ducks, the Coyotes, the Flyers, I think, were too bad to catch. But yeah, we hypothetically could have had the third best odds at him. Goals four here, Pittsburgh Penguins were at the top. Were we at the bottom? We weren't. So our goals four is fine. Goals against, Islanders had the best. 
and we had the sixth worst goals against in the league. So that's what I mean. Defense goaltending definitely an issue for our squad. Got to try and fix that. But first things first, HL teams in the playoffs trying to run the Calder Cup. I actually got a couple games there against Cleveland before that starts. And they win both games. Hopefully that's a bit of momentum there. We got the Utica comments here in round one. First games at home. Win the first game, lose the second. Game three, game four is a loss and a win. All right, so game five, win and move on. And it's a win. All right, there we go. At least the HL team doing something. On to round two here against the Belleville Senators. Again, home ice advantage because we won our division. First two games. We get a win and OT loss. I mean, we'll take that. Next two games here. Both losses, okay, so unfortunately, out in round two, but at least the HLT did something in note, making the playoffs, and now, of course, guys, we'll get to the draft, the awards, all that stuff. Again, fingers crossed we can get lucky in the lottery. And the playoffs are now complete, guys. The New Jersey Devils actually won the Stanley Cup, and the Belleville Senators won the Calder Cup, so as usual, we lost the eventual champions. The draft lottery is coming up. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm nervous. Sixth best odds, and we fell to eight. Chicago jumps from 10 to 1. Vegas from 7 to 2. Are you kidding me? Vegas, we actually, I guess, needed to win an extra game. Finish slightly better because Vegas went from the 7 to the 2. Chicago going from 10 to 1 to get Celebrini paired up with Bedard. What a joke. I'm sure even more people are going to be saying the draft lottery is rigged. Are you kidding me? Wow. So 8th overall. Hopefully there's still an elite player there for us to draft. Playoff tree here, guys. We actually had, I believe that's a Stanley Cup rematch. Did the Devils play the Avalanche before? Maybe I'm wrong and getting confused, but the Devils there beat the Penguins in the first round, Lightning in the second, Red Wings in the conference final before beating the Avs there in five. Avs went through the Jets, the Stars, and the Kings, which actually could be a pretty realistic playoff tree in real life, especially on the West side. We're looking at the awards next tier, I think we know all the team ones. Individually, McDavid, Art Ross Trophy is fourth straight. Ranton, though, gets the heart. Uh, you got Quinn Hughes there with the James Norris. Getting it over Victor Hedman must have just had a better plus minus. Jack Hughes, Lady Bing. That's actually really cool to see the Hughes brothers side by side winning awards. Calder, Connor Bedard, as you'd expect. Imagine Luke Hughes, though, on the Calder. It was three different Hughes in a row. That honestly been incredible. Jesper Brack got the Con Smythe. Sorokin, as we predicted. Vesna also got the Liam Jennings. Lindgren, Bill Masterton. Flames coach Jack Adams. Couturier Selkie. Ranton and Ted Lindsay. And then, of course, Matthews there with another Maurice Richard. So. I don't really know what happened. Somehow, I feel like, I guess that's a good sign. We played better after the deadline, after trading away some guys. AHL team, Belleville there, when they called their cup. We, of course, uh, not only won our division, we actually won the regular season Eastern Conference title, but the San Jose Barracuda won the entire regular season. Individual awards, Matt Coronado, most points. Atu Ratu, MVP. Coronado also had most goals. Grant Clark there was actually the best rookie and the best defenseman. McAnemy there, best goalie. Highmore, MVP of the playoffs. Cutman, sportsmanship. Deneen, community involvement, and finally McAnemy also had the lowest goals again. So we got our work cut out for us here, guys. We definitely might have to move up from the eighth spot if there's no medium league players available. We can't miss the playoffs with this Leafs team year one and not have anything to show for it. Definitely got to come away with at least some stud player. Don't have to necessarily make the team in next season, but we got to be impactful soon. So Milan Lucic there retires with the Bruins. Alex Edler with the Flames. I'm actually surprised. Mark Giordano did not retire at 40 years old. Phil Kessel's also going strong. So I'm a little bit surprised by that. Goaltending-wise, Halak does call it quit. Same with Brian Elliott. All right, guys, so here we go. NHL entry draft. Chicago Blackhawks, first overall pick. Not on the blocks. I'm actually surprised Vegas second overall is not there. I, mean, I guess it makes us feel a little bit better. Reigning Stanley Cup champs, and they did about as bad as we did. Again, picking eight. That is so tough. So I'll take a look here and see, as we expected. Celebrini there is supposed to go first overall. You got Iserman, two. Demidov, three. Levshinov, Dickinson, Catton, Lindstrom at seven. I've seen he's actually rising up the draft boards quite a bit. Celia have high top four. Okay, so it looks like we're picking eight, and that's where the medium leads end. Unless Dorian Ward, Polish. Okay. Similar style, Nathan McKinnon. So he's one of the EA created guys. We could drop back, land him. That's probably the move. Now looking at gems here, guys. Macklin Celebrini already got taken by Chicago. You got Alex Zetterberg, which, I mean, end of the first round is pretty good. I don't think he actually really turned out for us in the Sharks franchise. And looking at potentials here, I don't know if I can really trust many of these. Guaranteed medium elites. Vinny, they're letting us know about. He's going to go end of the second round. That's actually even later than he usually goes. Maybe I could land him. I think... We have Swayman, so not a huge deal if we don't get him. And actually, we don't even have a late second round pick. So, so I just realized we won't even be able to draft him anyways. Now, this is a steal. Colton Howden. Guaranteed medium top six. Going to be going like fourth round or something. Let's go. Now, next year, guys, I'm trying to drop back a couple spots to the Sharks. Just because I think, you know, there's no reason not to. 
gonna pick up whatever we can. Maybe they'll give us a fourth rounder here for free. They say no. Real life, I think, would actually probably cost more than that, but it's fine. Um, a sixth round pick for free. They say no. Okay, if we're not even getting a sixth at that point. I'm just taking our guy. I'm not gonna risk it. So we'll sim to pick number eight. Celia just went. Wait a minute. Celia just went at seven. Lindstrom at six. Dickinson, Levshinov, Demidov three. Eisman two. Celebrini one. I think Berkeley Catton is falling to us right now. Yeah, Central Scouting ranks him at six. That's nuts. Okay, Jonathan Tays there, similar style, NHL ATA one year. The thing is, I think we might have to pass on Catton because I'm pretty sure the Ward guy's better. The question is, do we think we can trade back in to get him? Maybe. Is it worth the risk? We got two and a half minutes to decide. All right, guys, so I'm thinking about it. I feel like we got to take Berkeley Catton here and then just make sure we trade back in for Ward. Like, we cannot miss out on him. So, uh, Berkeley Catton will take the fact he fell. He's medium elite. is crazy. 73 overall. Yeah, I won't be getting taken for a while. Washington can probably make a trade for their pick. Let's see. So, the next pick, Helenus. Sharks pick here is Downey. Okay, so we kind of have to get the Washington pick here. It really sucks we don't have a first round pick next year. 2026 could be Gavin McKenna. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do here? All right, guys, so I switched it up a bit. The New York Rangers have the 13th overall pick on the block. I'm offering up a 2027 first rounder. I don't want to risk the 2026 in case we're bad still and Gavin McKenna's there. Plus Chaz Lucius, who we just got. But I think, you know, it makes sense to give him up for a better prospect. Values on our side. Rangers picks on the block. They said no. I feel like that's got to be close, though. Try throwing in a fifth rounder. They said it's close, but not quite. Okay, let's do, like, the Philly fourth next year. There we go. So at this point, I basically just want to move up from 13 to 11. Although, oh my gosh, do we risk it? Our guy's supposed to go 13. Our guy's supposed to go 13. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and Ward there goes to the Capitals. 80 overall playmaker. Okay. Okay. And as you guys can see here, he's got more value than that 13th overall pick we just got from the Rangers. So I guess that's what I get for being greedy. This franchise so far has definitely been quite unlucky. Oh my gosh. Missing the playoffs. Then that guy literally going two picks earlier. Usually it's no more than one. So I figured I could, you know, just go for the 12th pick. Wow. Luckily, I guess the good news is we could get a defenseman here, which we kind of need. I'm Jaracek, one year in HLTA. Zane Preck, two years. Yeah, so I think we're just going to have to stick with our trade now, guys. Like I said, just got unlucky. Zane Preck, he actually went above Adam Jerichek, even though Jerichek was ranked higher. Okay, I'm honestly fine with that. Jerichek's a bit better defensively. I can see one overall higher than Preck, though, the offensive defenseman. So uh, we'll see how this works out for us. Obviously, our two guys aren't going to make an impact next season, which should be helping the team in a couple years' time on entry-level deals, when I think we're honestly going to need the cap space quite a bit. So... Hopefully it works out. And our next pick here, guys, is the end of the third round. Honestly, just looking for best player available. But honestly, guys, I'm probably just going to take this Herman Liv guy a little bit early. Medium starter potential, Swedish goalie. Let's see. He is medium starter. End of the third round. That's really not that bad. And I think, yeah, actually, our next pick, we won't be able to get him. So I'm happy with that. Next here, we'll take Howden a little bit early, but guaranteed me I'm top six. I'm fine with it. Only 49 overall, but still solid. Now, the end of the round here, I'll probably take the next pin guy, too. Guaranteed medium top nine. 54, honestly, end of the fifth round. Like, that's not terrible. Maybe at this point, we can get some steals. Pick six in the sixth round. 166 overall, low top 6D. I feel like you might as well take a chance on somebody like Benjamin McLean, who could be a low elite. And he's a low 7D. I mean, yeah. Swung for the fences there and missed. I still can't believe got greedy on that medium elite forward and then... The Capitals take him. Unreal. Let's try Xavier McIntyre here. Medium bottom six. Okay, so overall, can't be too upset with the draft, obviously. We still have the meme elite player there in Catton. Hopefully, he ends up still being a stud. And now entering the resign phase here, guys, we've got almost $22 million in cap space. TJ Brody, I mentioned, we should bring back. He's very solid defensively. One year, 5.5. I'll offer him that. It's actually less than he was asking for at the beginning of the season. A little dream was asking for four. Now he wants 2.8. So that's why we waited four years. It's still pretty cheap. Five years. I mean, seven years. If he grows a little bit, three million bucks for him. I don't mind at all. Robertson was in the AHL. He shouldn't ask for a lot. Two years, 2.75. He's probably going to go up in rating if he does well. Let's try like a two year, 2.5 on him. 
Phil Kessel, I wouldn't mind bringing back. Two years, two million. He honestly, I think he was a really bad dash player though. Minus 25. Probably move on from Phil. It was fun for one year though at least. Isaac Lundstrom, I think, could still be a fourth liner, especially at that price. Wow. We could have him for two years there, league min. Might as well do that. Travis Dermott's down to a 79, so actually don't even need to bring him back at this point. Noah Gregor, maybe a fourth liner. Probably AHL, though. And now looking at goalies here, guys. Jeremy Swayman, of course, needs a new deal. Wants well, 575 for two. That's actually really fair. Then it gets a lot more. Okay. Uh, let's try, like, five and a half for two. We did play a lot better with him in net, even though the stats didn't make a ton of sense. Martin Jones, I probably could find like a younger goalie for the AHL that's similar rated. Petrozelli there, 25, only a 74. Honestly, I'd rather have like an AHL back with more potential, like he'll be there, 22, 73. Low starter. This guy's a fringe starter. I don't know, 21, 69. The other guys in front were better. Probably can just let him go. All right, so Isaac Lundstrom's coming back to the team. Same with Jeremy Swayman, two years, 5.5. I think it's a great contract. TJ Brody as well, five and a half, I think, is the exact same. Lilligan, the long-term $3 million deal. Robertson, the bridge at two and a half. I think the rest is just AHL guys, either signing new contracts or getting extended. So we still have 8.5 million in cap space. We definitely have to, you know, sign some positions. Goal tightening, we're good apart from an AHL starter. Defense, we need a top four defense, and that's gonna cost us four or five million, or we're gonna have to trade for one. Forward-wise, of course, we got, like, you know, the stud four. Yarncroft, 84 overall, making 2.1 is great deal. Robertson's going to be at least in the top nine, if not top six. Matthew Nyes will probably be third line. Actually, I'm looking at it here, guys, assuming none of these dudes grow to be, like, an 80-plus. I think we still need, like, four NHL fours, which is kind of nuts. All right, guys, it's time for free agency now. Let's see what we can do here with the $8 million we were able to clear up. Jonathan Marchessault, $9 million, cannot afford. Patty Kane could almost afford. Same with Joe Pavelski there. Brett Pesci, we, I did say we need a top four defenseman. Noah Hannafin as well could fill in there. We wanted to just go hard on D and then try and find some cheap forwards and rely on the top four. Honestly, we're in a tough spot here. Like, the Maple Leafs don't have a lot of cap space. And I still can't believe we even make the playoffs last year. Carter Hart is an RFA, I'm sure. We'll get signed there by the Flyers. Samsonov's a UFA, but we got Jeremy Swayman now. Look at two A goalies here, sort of by potential, as I mentioned. Could use an NHL starter, but... Fowler? Why is Fowler here? What, what the heck? 19 years old, 72 overall, high starter. This dude was just drafted by Montreal. If he accepts the contract, I'll trade him back to them. I don't really understand that one. Tobias Lennon, 1971, medium starter, is also like pretty decent, especially to get for free. This guy, I feel like he's not so good. We have to trade him back. I'll actually keep him, but we actually do need someone with some overall. And it looks like 76 plus is asking for a million. So I'll probably just wait in terms of an AHL starter. Martin Jones there is asking for 1.9. And honestly, guys, I'm looking at Brett Pesci here. I know a lot of Leafs fans want him. 7.2 million for the next five years. Very good defensively, right-handed. Could be the perfect pairing with Riley. Could go like McCabe, Lodrigan, second pairing. And then Timmins, and I think I'm forgetting somebody on the bottom pair. Wouldn't have a lot of money left for forwards, but could probably find some like decent fill-ins. Actually, speaking of... Let's look at two-way forwards here and see what's available. So the best guys are 78s. Not ideal. Honestly, guys, JVR here, 35 years old. Only asked for 2 million bucks in 83. He's a pretty good contract. Could bring back a former Leaf there. But apart from him, there's really no one that's, you know, a great value deal. I also think uh, Max Domi actually did get signed. I was thinking he might be available for us in free agency. Or actually, never mind. He's right there. 2.8 million, so if we wanted to bring him back, could do that. He only had four points to the Winnipeg Jets. Jeez, yeah, much better player with us. And so you know what, guys? I am going to try and get Brett Pesci. I feel like he fits better than Hannah Finn. Again, just him and Riley top pair would give us an actually legit top pair. 88 overall. We're paying a lot here for defensive defensemen. 7.5 million. Let's do four years. Oh, he actually goes down to six. Does it make sense to have less years? I'm just thinking, like, is he going to be getting worse? The caps will be going up, though, so... Let's do five, that's what he's asking for. It's risky, but uh, I think we have to make the risk. Two-way players, Tyler Madden, 24, 77. Potentially just help out the AHL team. Gadjevich here, we could actually sign AHL team, be like a bottom six enforcer. Do two years there. And I think Anderson, former seventh overall pick, we could give him a two-year deal. Maybe he'll help out the AHL team, looking at his stats, though it's kind of average. We actually, 
you know what we do really need is defenseman, and there's not a lot available. Nicholas Bodwin, 2475, could take a chance on him. Jet Wu, same thing. Offer both of them three year deals. Hopefully they can grow a little bit. And then Ryan Merkley here, 2375, very good skater. He's got like insane skating stats. Pretty good passing. Honestly, offensively, Michael will tear up the AHL, so we'll give him a max contract too. Three years, 950. I, like I said, I think we need a three HL defense and that could, should cover it. And at this point, we kind of have to wait on Pesci before we can make any other NHL offers. And there you go, guys. Gadget said yes. Apparently thinks he's joined the Leafs, not the Marlies. Jet Wu said yes. Anderson, Bodwin, Madden. So all the minor league deals, Merkley, Lennon in. Fowler said yes. I mentioned I'll trade him the Montreal Canadiens. And look at that, guys. Brett Pesci did say yes. I'm truly humbled by the offer. Okay, so the defense might be fixed now. Jerry Swayman back in goal. This team, if we can get lucky with some forward signings, obviously the 80 overall medium elite in the forward group would have been pretty nice to have, especially, you know, playing first line, you probably would have bopped off, but I will learn from being greedy here. We've only got 1.5 million in cap space, so I think we really just got to kind of wait a month and see if anybody's prices come down. All right, guys, like I was saying, trading Fowler back to the Canadians. They got to give up a seventh round pick, though, as a stupid tax. I think Tugi said that before. And there we go. And TJ Brody, guys, was actually a defenseman I totally forgot about. So behind Riley Pesci, top pair, you got Brody, Lozergan, second pairing, McCabe, Timmons on the bottom. I feel like that's actually not a bad decor. It's just the forward group here. After the top six, which Robertson's included in, you got Nice, who's looking pretty good, and then nothing. Like, Lundstrom there is our eighth best forward. That's just not good enough. And now this is kind of crazy, guys. I was looking around the league for guys we could potentially trade for. Zach Heim is now 90 overall. After putting up 85 points in 82 games last year, time on ice almost 22 minutes. So just riding shotgun on the first line, like David, that is crazy. I think he starts at like an 87. I never seen him get to a 90 that fast. All right, guys, so this is actually an interesting offer. Matthew Phillips, a fifth and a third from the Capitals for Howden there in a fifth. I mean, I don't really want to give up Howden, but maybe if we take him off, take the third off. But they just give us Phillips for free. Say nine overall. Could honestly, he's 26 years old, one year left to grow. Could maybe use him on the third line. He's got pretty good offensive stats there. Like 86 passing, decent shot. And usually when I have him on my team, he doesn't usually get a chance. Ends up being the AHL. So you can see there, he's got a good skater too. 89 speed, 90 excel, 91 agility. Would they give him to us for free? Trades rejected, okay. I mean, take off the fifth. I mean, would they give him to us for a seventh? Pretty equal, he's on the block. They say no. Let's bump it up to a sixth. There we go, okay. So honestly, like I said, can end up being a third liner for us. We literally are just lacking that much depth. And as you guys can see here, I just sent up to August. So I'm hoping whatever free agents are still available are asking for a lot less money. We've got still like that 1.5 million. Let's take a look here. So JVR is still available, wants 1.783. He's definitely the best one here. We'll offer our max, which actually went down, I guess, with uh, Phillips. So 1.4, see what he says. I guess after that, we'd have to go to two-way players. Zach Brise, Josh Bailey. I mean, you can get them for league men, depth players, play our fourth line, which is honestly what we need. Let's see, Andrew K, Bailey's got some other teams interested. Parise doesn't, so see if uh, those guys want to join the squad. Christian Veselainen here is available, 25-78. Obviously, former first-round pick. I think like two years ago, EA had him still had a medium league potential, which is pretty funny. I'll give him like a one-year deal, I guess. Probably just having the AHL, though. Patrick Maroon here, 78 overall. Four and a half star physical there. I feel like he's kind of a cheaper Ryan Reeves. If we really do need some guys, we could uh, potentially use him too. And in regards to the AHL guys, McEnany is actually a free agent. 78 overall at 25 years old, high fringe star potential. If you forget, he just won AHL goalie of the year with the San Jose Barracuda. I mean, this seems like a no brainer. We'll try 975 k two years. I'm gonna have to trade away a couple guys for roster spots, but might have actually lucked out there, you know, filling in some spots. Hopefully, JVR says yes. That's probably the big one. Now, Colorado, for some reason, guys, always has a ton of extra contract spots. You can see they're only 32 out of 50 there. Offering up Kressler, Ford. We actually just got him. And Mittenden, who actually, two of these guys are being top nine. Those being bomb six. They're not that bad. But looking at it, I mean, could potentially get a fourth round pick for these three. Yeah, I would say yes. Okay, honestly, they weren't that good just because they had decent potential, but they are getting up there in age, so... Picks next year, we, we can't not make the playoffs. They're the one and up without a two. I'm not even sure actually who has our first rounder right now, but we'll see what all those uh, guys said of the offers. Bailey goes to the Tampa Bay Lightning, fair enough. JVR rejected, wants more money. Luckily, still hasn't signed. Maroon said yes, though. McInemy, not interested in a two way, even though it showed he was. Parise said yes. Veselainen, okay. And look at this, guys. August 5th, JVR is now asking for 1575, which is basically 
exactly as much money as we have. So that's the only offer I'm going to put out. If he says yes, I'll then try and get uh, McAnemy back on the squad. Oilers here. Basically, you get to move up one round to give up medium starter goalie. Doesn't make a ton of sense. And there we go. JVR returning to the Leafs, just like Kessel the year before him. As you guys can see here, McAnemy clearly under like the two-way thing. Maybe he just didn't want a two-year deal. Maybe that's what he meant, not a two-way. Because like I said, AHL, we had a couple 74s. But if we can bring in like the reigning best AHL goalie, makes a ton of sense to me. And there we go. McAnemy said yes. All right, guys. So I'm going to start next season. I feel like he did an okay job filling out the rest of this squad. But definitely still lacking some depth. So... Looking at the team here, I've actually got Matthew Nye's riding shotgun with Matthews and Marner. I'm hoping he can do really well there. He's actually got one year left on his entry level deal. Probably extend him for the start of the season because he's playing first line. He's going to do a lot better than he otherwise would. Second line, you got Yarn Kroc there at Tavares and Nylander. I think that's very solid second. It does kind of suck. Tavares has dropped in rating 86, but he's 34 now. He's also on his last year of his $11 million contract. Hopefully, he'll take a pay cut. Third line here, you got Nick Robertson with Matthew Phillips, JVR. I actually don't think that's too bad. Fourth is Parise, Lundstrom, Pat Maroon. It's also like not terrible. Defensively, I think we have a really nice top pair now in Riley and Pesci. We got Lildrigan, Brody, second pairing, McCabe, Timmons on the bottom. They get a minus one, but not the end of the world. Goaltending wise, we got Swayman starting. He's an 86. Again, melee potential. Hopefully, as a good season goes up. And then Wool there backing him up. I feel like, you know, if Swayman's not giving us great numbers, he has value. Can always trade him away under term there for two more years. And then just rock with Wool as a starter who's lower rated. And obviously will be cheaper. AHL wise, looking pretty good again. Abruzzi there playing with Fraser Minton. No longer in junior. And Noah Gregor. You got Ty Voigt. Drag Chensev. Holmberg. I mean, look at the rest of this squad. Like, should be a playoff team for sure again in the AHL. Defensively, they've actually got Merkel in the top pair. Just because he is fast. Great passing. Hopefully, he can put up some points with us. I feel like a top six decor there is not bad. Goaltending again. We got the best goal in the AHL last year in McAnemy. So hopefully that's a boost to the squad. I'm not exactly sure if the NHL team is better this season than last. I feel like definitely the forward group has less depth. But the defense is better and obviously uh, the goaltending is much better too. So it's going to be an interesting year for sure. Hopefully don't get unlucky. Let's actually quickly check the staff chemistry. Has it gotten better after a season? 58. I think it was like 54, maybe 57 max last year. So it's still not the best. I know like a couple of the coaches I had randomly retired after I signed them, like literally one year in. I think like the NHL goalie coach and the AHL assistant coach both retired. I don't really understand that still. It seems pretty random. But anyways, guys, for next episode, we're going to have 97 offense, 92 defense, and 86 goaltending. Hopefully that's good enough to actually make the playoffs. Definitely going to rely on those three guys quite heavily. Matthews, Marner, Nylander. Need them to pop off. We want to get back into the playoff picture. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit that sub button down below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.